In this lecture, we will be covering testing and configuration management. We will address use of automated tools. Then we will see how automated tests are used in integration and system levels. After that, we will see goals of the automated tests. And the last topic is what is the risk of frequent changes? Based on what we covered till now in this syllabus, it is clear that test automation is the important aspect of Agile model. Agile projects often involve heavy use of automated tools to develop, test, and manage software development. Developers use tools for static analysis, unit testing, and code coverage. Developers continuously check the code and unit tests into a configuration management system using automated builds and test frameworks. Let's understand this point with the help of this. Once the source code is developed and available, we do version controlling of it. That means we provide a unique ID to it so that it is easily identifiable. Then we start the build process where we complete the compiling and linking process and executable files are generated. Then we perform static code analysis on it. Once that's done, we perform unit testing on the code by running automated test scripts. After that, we analyze the generated report to see code coverage. Once all the things are fine, we store the results, and those are called artifacts. Once the unit testing is done, we move to functional testing of the code. For that, we have to set up the test environment first, by changing it to test new features. Once the test environment is ready, we can run functional testing automated scripts. Then we can publish the over result or email to the development team. So whenever the new code is checked in, this process continuous. This is why the name of the process is continuous integration. Let's move on to the next topic, use of automated tests in integration and system levels. These automated tests can also include functional tests at the integration and system levels. Such functional and automated tests may be created using functional testing harnesses, open source user interface, functional test tools, or commercial tools, and can be integrated with the automated tests run as part of the continuous integration framework as we saw previously. In some cases, due to the duration of the functional tests, the functional tests are separated from the unit tests and run less frequently. For example, unit tests may be run each time new software is checked in, while the longer functional tests are run only every few days. For example, unit tests will be performed after each sprint, but functional testing can be performed once after three sprints because functional tests takes long execution time. Let's see the goal of automated tests. One goal of the automated tests is to confirm that the build is functioning and it is in stable state. Let's see this diagram to understand it. Once the code is developed, we perform static analysis on it, then the code is compiled and build is successful, we can say that code is stable and all these steps are automated. If any automated test fails, the team should fix the underlying defect in time for the next code check-in. Let's understand this point. During test, if the defect is found, it has to be fixed before the code is given out for other purpose. Otherwise, testing or next development activity will be done on the wrong code. But with automated test, we can quickly get the results and in case of failure defect can be fixed. This requires an investment in real-time test reporting to provide good visibility into test results. This approach helps reduce expensive and inefficient cycles of build, install, fail, rebuild, reinstall that can occur in many traditional projects. Let's understand this point. Suppose there is no proper test process available and developer develops their code and after developing, they try to build the code without performing the static analysis as proper process is not defined. Then there is a high chance that the build will fail 
and you will need to fix the code and again build it. This is called rebuild process. Now suppose build is through and you didn't perform unit testing and directly flashed the code and during testing you found many defects and found that software is unstable due to memory leak, which could have been found during unit testing. Now again, developers have to fix this and all these steps have to be followed. And again, to do this installation process, this is called reinstall. The point I want to make here is if you don't have proper process in place, you will spend lots for a time in build, install, fail, rebuild, reinstall cycle. Automation test helps in reducing this inefficient cycle. To summarize, the three goals are to confirm that the build is functioning and it is in stable state. If any automated test fails, the team should fix the underlying defect in time for the next code check-in. This approach helps reduce inexpensive and inefficient cycles of build, install, fail, rebuild, reinstall that can occur in many traditional projects. Before we end this lecture, remember this point. Automated testing and build tools help to manage the regression risk associated with the frequent change that often occurs in agile projects. However, over-reliance on automated unit testing alone to manage these risks can be a problem, as unit testing often has limited defect detectiveness. We need automated tests at the integration and system levels are also required.